everyone welcome to another tutorial today we'll be talking about making apache guacamole backups so if you followed any of my videos to install apache guacamole or if you follow the apache documentation and installed apache guacamole you may be wondering how can i back up my system should in case something goes wrong to easily restore your files guacamole stores all of these settings user information and connection information in its database which can be my sql or MariaDB. it also has several files such as extension files and your configuration file in the guacamole directory another important part of your guacamole you may want to back up is the tomcat configuration files so this is why i made this video to show you guys how to back up your apache guacamole using a backup script that i created it is a very simple script and all you need to do is make a few changes in order to be able to use this script so without wasting more time i'm just going to go ahead and show you guys how to use my script to create a backup of your apache guacamole server so in order for us to do this you're going to ssh into your guacamole server so once you SSH into your guacamole server, what we're going to do is run the wget command to download the guacamole script from GitHub. So the command will be wget followed by the link to the guacamole backup script. So once you run that command, the guacamole backup script is downloaded. Now we're going to use nano and open up that script file. So we can make some changes to meet our environment. I'm going to show you the changes you need to make to this script to get it up and running. So if you know how to write bash scripts, you can make changes however you want. But this is just a basic script I created to be able to use and back up your Apache guacamole using cron. So set up a cron task to make automated backups so the script doesn't receive any inputs you have to open the script and make the changes that meet your needs so it is very simple the only thing you need to change here is the destination the destination is where the backups are going to be stored in so in this case i would advise or it is best practice that you store your backups on a separate system so if you have the ability to create an FTP, SFTP server, or maybe an SMB share uh, mounted onto your Ubuntu system. And then you can specify the directory in the DEST or destination variable. So just take this out and then put in the absolute path of your backup directory. Once you have that done, the only other thing you need to do is come below and change the root user of your mysql database password so you're going to put in your root users password and then that's everything you need to do so once you do that you save the script and once that's complete the next thing we're going to do here is make the script to be executable so we're going to give permissions in order for us to execute the script so you're going to use the chmod command so sudo chmod and once you run that now we are ready to run our script to do that we're going to run the command sudo sh and then the script name so once we run this you can see that we get some messages um, first of all we don't have any error messages our backup for my sql database was successfully completed um, and also you can see for uh, copying the folders we didn't get any errors as well so the backup was completed so now for us to confirm again that the backup was completed and everything is fine we're going to cd into that backup directory that i have and if we look inside of this directory we have one new folder created which starts with the name lab because it's the host name of the machine like we set the parameters in the script um, so host name year month day and then time so every time if we do multiple backups if i was to run that script again let's say if i do this 
home lab user the script was successful again so if i run the ls command we can see that now we have a second backup file created one um one during 1820 and the other one 1821 so the file names are just going to match the year the month the day and the time the backup was created so you know which backup is which for the same system so if you wanted to restore a backup for a specific day you can go there find that backup and restore the backup the other thing that the script creates for you is a backup log so if you were running the script which we're going to set a cron task by the way i'll show you guys how to set a cron task so this script can automatically run in the background during a specific time you can come and check the backup log to see if your, your script is successfully conducting the backups or anything is failing so if we do the cat command to view the backup log file so you're just going to do backup.log you can see it adds just a single line of text um, backing up the entire folder for guacamole the server xml file and web apps was successfully completed on the day and time the same for my sql database so if for whatever reason the uh, my sql database backup failed it's going to show it in here that the backup failed and so forth okay so so far everything is working i would advise you test the script like i'm testing it now before you set the cron task for it to run automatically because as long as the script is working fine nothing should change so you shouldn't even worry about this log i just have it there so it while i was testing the script it made it easy for me um so i'm gonna clear that page up and what we're gonna do now is create a cron task so this script can run within a specific day and time so for us to set up cron you're going to run the command cron tab dash e in my case i want my cron to be running as the root user so i'm going to change um to uh, my root user using the command sudo dash i and once i change to my root user we're going to run the command um, cron tab dash e so if you run that command successfully your cron tab should look like this yours is going to be empty and it's not going to have this line that i already have in there i have this line set up for the guacamole backup script we just ran so um to set cron you can look more on google and learn how to use cron like i said if you guys like you can leave it in the comment section below and i'll create a video about setting cron task so once you run that command your cron tab file is going to look sort of like mine except you're not going to have this line in here so to set up cron um, as you can see here you just have to start by putting um, the m stands for the minute h for hour the next one dom is for day of the month and the next one is the month and then the last one is the day of the week in our case here you can see this is going to ru run at 10 59 pm so unfortunately this uses military time so if you don't know how to use military time or understand military time you can always google it but this runs at 10 59 pm every day so we did not specify any day month or day of the week so we just want it to run every day so right now for me here the time is 2 50 pm so i'm going to set this cron to run at um so i want it to run at 2 52 pm okay i'm just going to save that and then we're going to wait to see if that is going to run how we're going to know is we're going to cd so i'm going to go back as my lab user and so as of right now we have two backups that we already conducted manually so we're just going to give it some time and then once it gets to 2.52 p.m. or after 2.52 p.m. I'm going to check 
using the ls command so we can see and then we'll look at the backup log to see the day and the time that the backup was conducted so i'll speed up this video so we can check once it's complete after 2 52 pm so if we do the ls command we can see that um the backup was successfully run by cron and it was run um 1452 which is 2.52 p.m. like we said it and then if we do a cat command and open up the log we have the same log in here so now that we've tested and made sure that our backup works manually and using cron i will be making a part two of this video where we will be using a restore script to restore our backups that we've created for our apache guacamole Thank you for watching. If you have any questions about my guacamole backup script or any other guacamole problems or issues you might be facing, please leave it down in the comment section below. And please do not forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel.